Real Social Sharp. Today is September 26, 2021, and it's 1247 right now, just as we started this video. God's showing us again the time frame we are in. 124 represents going back to Eden, um, the end times that we're in. Somebody asked me about, are we in the seven-year countdown? We don't know that. We have to see how things play out in Israel with the building of the temple to see the time frame we're actually in, but we are most definitely in the last days because of what's going on in the world and the evil that's rising up. So Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Yeshua. We ask you for wisdom, guidance, Holy Spirit, direct our path. We rebuke coronavirus in Jesus, Yeshua's name. We rebuke abortions in Jesus, Yeshua's name, the judgment because of that that's come upon this country and this land. I pray, Father, that it gets overturned uh, we come against the false government we have, and we just rebuke it all in the name of Jesus, Yeshua. The Father gave me a list of things the other day that I want to read off, because if you follow them, it will change your life, absolutely will change your life. What the Father is doing with his people, the bride of Jesus, is he's molding us into the image of our Lord. and. The way he does that by showing us, teaching us, guiding us, and, and leading us to all truth. Because it's the truth that sets us free. We have to understand one thing. You can't take things personal in this world. I'm going to say that again. You cannot take things personal. My husband Gary said this to me years ago. It's not personal. Anything we go through, it's not personal. It's a war. It's a battle between good and evil. So evil doesn't say in the morning, oh, gee, I hate Lois's guts. I'm going to go and kill her. If I'm in his way, he will do whatever he could do to stop me. But it's not exactly a personal vendetta against me personally. Although he does do that at times. But the point I'm trying to make is, we are all in his way. When you are in an army and the army is coming against another army, do you think when somebody from the other side shoots somebody on, on our side that they even know who the person is half the time? They're just shooting to stop the other army from winning the war. So that's what's happening. The army of evil is stopping whoever he can who's getting in its way of winning the war. And what is the war? What is the winning of the war for evil? It's to take over planet Earth and occupy it and have human beings follow it. Evil. So it can exist forever. It's looking to find a way to exist for eternity so that it doesn't have to die and be judged and go to hell. That's why all the AI stuff is going on out there and the way to prolong life and to abort babies that are just getting in the way of things. It's all evil's agenda and it's a war. And when you sign up for an army, whatever part of the army you're in, the Marines, uh, the army, the Mar you know, whatever. I don't know the, the specific names of them all. But the different areas of the armies that the United States of America has, they know when they go into battle that they have a mission. They have a mission to accomplish. And the mission is to thwart the other side from winning, whatever that may be, whether it's trying to take over a village or a town. We are supposed to be thwarting evil from taking over. And are we doing that? Or are we the people in the army? Can you imagine a soldier on the battlefield sitting there waiting and saying to themselves, oh, I hope I don't get shot. Oh, if they shoot me. Oh, that's just such a terrible thing for me in my life. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And his focus is only on that, his own emotions and what he's going to do. Oh, what about my family and this and that? They do think that stuff. But that's not what they're dwelling on. 
They're dwelling on the mission. And whatever it takes to complete the mission, they do it. Without hesitation. Because if a gun is being aimed at somebody in the army, they shoot back. And they don't stop and say to themselves, oh my gosh, look how young he is. Or he must have, maybe he has a family. Maybe he just got married. Maybe this, maybe that. No. They have to stop evil. Period. That's the way we should be thinking. Oh, why did I get sick? Why did I break up with my boyfriend? I can't function in this world. My husband got taken home. It's over for me. We think too personal instead of realizing it's not personal. If God takes a loved one home, he has a reason for it. He did it to me. And there was a good reason for it. And I had to accept it or allow the enemy to destroy me and my emotions. Did God make the way for me? Absolutely. He brought Gary into the picture to console me in my person. Yeah, but Lois, you don't understand. Nobody came into my life to console me. Well, then there's a reason for that too. Maybe you're a lot stronger than you think you are. Maybe I'm a lot weaker than you think I am. Think about that for a minute. Maybe I had to have somebody in my life to help me get through. Maybe the pressure that I deal with in this battle is way greater than what you deal with. So I needed somebody to help me get through it. I didn't think about it. When the Lord said he was taking my husband home, I said, you know what's best for me. You know I'm going to fall apart. That was what my conclusion was going to be about the whole deal. But he did it anyway. Look what happened to Job. He lost his entire family, basically. And then his wife told him, why don't you just curse God and die already? Like, give it up already. He said, what, should I curse God when things don't go right for me? And should I only praise the Lord when things look good? Is that the Christian you are? Are you the type Christian just praising the Lord when things look good for you? That's not a Christian. And that's not the bride of Jesus either. I hate to tell you. So if you're one of those complaining and upset because you feel God has let you down, you are not the bride of the Lord. Because you are not thinking clearly. You are thinking with your emotions. And the avenue that Satan comes in and attacks us is in our emotions. He wants to bring us down. He wants to stop us. He wants to make us not move forward in the army and in the battle. We're in the battle. And we must all complete our missions. Well, I don't know what my mission is. Well, you need to find out what your mission is. You need to seek the Father and ask him, what's my mission? Maybe your mission is just praying every day. Maybe your mission is a great prayer warrior of the kingdom of God. Nobody might ever know your mission except you and the Lord. There are secret op missions, you know. Maybe you're in the secret op mission that nobody even knows about. They call them special ops. They go in in secret and they go and they rescue people and nobody has a clue what's going on behind closed doors. But here they are, bam, they enter in, they break in and they rescue a prisoner of war or something. And they're heroes. But they couldn't tell their wives, they couldn't tell anybody the heroism of what they had just done because they're special ops. We're not thinking that way. We're not thinking about us being in an army. Why do you think we're called the army of the Lord? So we could just sing nice songs. We're the army of the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> it's because we are an army, for real. We are the army of the Lord. And we have to start acting like the army of the Lord and completing our missions and doing what we're called to do. But no, we deal with crushed souls, and I call it crushed souls, where we just allow the enemy to penetrate our souls, and we get so upset in our souls that we become useless for our God and for the kingdom of the Almighty Father, our God, Jesus, our Lord. Because we're so wrapped up in our feelings and how sad we are. Because things didn't go our way. Well, church, 
And I have news for us today. It's time to stop dismaying and start praying and realizing why things are the way they are. And stop thinking about your own personal life and feeling sorry for yourself. And get a focus on what your purpose is in the world and why you are alive. Well, Lois, I'm not alive. I'm, I'm going home. I, I don't know. I'm very sick. Well, maybe it's your time to go home. Or maybe it's your time to fight the good fight of faith and rebuke it in the name of Jesus, Yeshua. Are we doing everything we're meant to do? Or are we just wrapping up in our emotions, emotions, emotions? Wrapping up in our emotions, we, we become non-functionable. Because every one of us has a story to tell of how sad we can be every day and how upset we can be every day. How upset are you? Are you so upset that all you do is just non-function? Have you gotten into sin so much so that you're non-functioning in the kingdom of God now? Are you drinking yourself to oblivion? Are you taking drugs that are, are making you useless? Are you eating to the point where you become so obese that you can function now in the flesh? These are things that the enemy does to us because he uses our emotions. We have to get it together. We have to understand it's the mission and then come against the flesh that the enemy is using to stifle us and stop us. All of us have sin in our lives we deal with. Every one of us. Mine is I tend to get over anxious about things. I got to get things done. I got to get things done. And I'm a go-getter. But the problem is I'm such a go-getter that I keep on going to like drop to the ground. Well, that's not very good either, is it? There's a time to work, and then there's a time to rest. Jesus did his ministry work, and then he went off, and he sat in the presence of the Father because he had to be filled by the Father. You know, there's all different personalities. I'm what they call the type A personality. But there has to be a balance. And you have to understand that we are in a flesh body. And the flesh body will be attacked with the emotions. The flesh body will deal with sin. You will have to deal with the flesh. You can't get away from it. It is what it is. And you will be dealing with it until we are transformed out of these flesh bodies into our supernatural bodies that we will receive when we get raptured out of here. In the twinkling of an eye, we will be changed and caught up and meet our Lord in the air. But until that day, you have your flesh to deal with. And how are you going to deal with it? Well, I'm going to give you, I think he gave me 12. 12 ways that he showed me to deal with our flesh. Now remember, stop looking at things personally and thinking, wow. Why did God do this to me? I'm angry at God because he didn't answer my prayer. Well, maybe there's a reason he didn't answer your prayer. There's always a reason for everything. Maybe it's because you failed the test of loving him anyway. And now you're angry at God because he didn't answer your prayer. And he's just testing to see how much do you really love him? You know, that's the bottom line is how much do we love him? Because that's the bride of Jesus. We have to be so in love with him that it doesn't matter. That nothing else matters. The kingdom of God and nothing else matters. That's basically, that's the truth. So this is the first thing he said to me. Fasting and prayer are very powerful. They're weapons against the enemy. This will be transposed. All the videos, by the way, are transposed and they go up on our website. They might take a few days. We have a woman that does it for us. God bless you, sister. I love her very dearly. She's not even, doesn't even live in this state. She gets the videos, she transposes them, sends them back to us, and then Gary puts them up on the website. So sometimes it takes a little time. So, but they are always up there. Number two, perfect peace 
comes from perfected love because you know God loves you no matter what. That's the power in the kingdom right there. Three, do not fear death. It's just a moving from this realm to the spiritual realm. Four, the Father loves us without a doubt. It brings joy and comfort of soul. There should be no doubt. You should have no doubt that God loves you. If you are doubting that God loves you, you're dealing with an emotional issue. Because none of us, as the children of God, should be doubting that God loves us. Absolutely, positively, you should not be doubting. You should know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus came into the world because he loved you so much. It says it in the, in the word. For God so loved the world, it says. Number five, when things look really bad, we can truly trust him. Very powerful. Six, evil has no power over our God. Seven, we are truly forgiven for our sins so we can feel comfort in our soul, not guilt. If you're living in guilt, again, you are not walking in the kingdom the way you should be. Eight, Love is the ultimate power in the universe. And when you connect to God's true love, nothing can steal it from you. Nine, you must believe that Jesus died on the cross to take away your sins from you. Freedom. Ten, disciples were able to go through anything because they believed in the love of God and knew that the sufferings of this life did not compare to the glory that is revealed in us as his people the sons of God. 11. All things really do work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. All things, everything you're going through, truly does work together for good. These are very powerful things. It's almost like Proverbs he's given us. 12. You can only operate in the kingdom of God through Jesus, the washing us clean. So the Holy Spirit can come into our temple that has been made clean through the blood of our Lord. That's the 12 that I got. I got a short word from the Lord too at 1240 exactly. But I just want to say again about our souls. We have crushed souls that need healing. And we need to ask the Father to heal us in Jesus Yeshua's name. That's what has to happen. Because we are the army. We are in a battle against good and evil. And we need to walk in the kingdom in that army and complete our missions. So I'm going to tell you again. Stop taking things personal. Stop asking God, why is this happening to me? Why did this happen to me? Why did that happen to me? How come my prayers aren't being answered yet? Stop asking him all these questions. You either trust him or you don't. And when you start asking him why and questioning him, you are not trusting him. You are doubting in his goodness and his love and his mercy. Do you believe he loves you today? No, do you really believe he loves you today? If you're feeling guilty, you don't believe he loves you. If you're living in fear, you don't believe he loves you. If you doubt his goodness in your life, you don't believe he loves you. That's just the truth. And we need to recognize that so we can receive healing. And you need to follow these 12 principles because they're things that will change your life if you follow them and do them. I, I live them every day. When something happens that I don't like or I'm upset about, I know God loves me. And I never doubt his love for me. I just don't. I got healed many years ago of that doubt in my life. It my, became my strength. And I bring it to the people. You have to know it. And you have to, you have to live in that. Every day you have to live in his love for you. And most of us don't. We don't even know how to. Because we're always condemning ourselves or always feeling upset about things. You can't have the joy of the Lord and be upset every day and depressed. If you're living in depression, you're not walking in the joy of the Lord either. The joy of the Lord is our strength. He has joy in us. 
God has more confidence in us than we have in ourselves. We have to start allowing that love to penetrate our being so we can be, be healed. Now, this is what he said to me. It is time, and are you ready? Years and years of being prepared for this economic woe. Are you ready? Time to watch and see how I am turning America back to me. You will see evil walk away. Time to pray for a better day. The collapse of the economy, an anomaly for all to see and for evil to flee. It's America's true destiny. Now watch and see. The plans that evil has will wash away like the sand. Evil will not stand. This has been my plan. This is my plan from the start that evil would be thwart. And the government that will take over will have my heart on its shoulder. Speaking words of truth and justice, it was a must fix. Trust in my plan as evil washes away like the sand. And the light of my sun will shine once again. And the world will see that true justice is my plea. Like Lady Justice represents liberty. Do you agree? Love your father who art in heaven. He's asking us, do we agree with what he just said there? Do you believe America's coming back? Or are you one of those that think it's all over? We have to search our hearts. And search the Holy Spirit who's in our heart. To find out truth. We can all learn things every day. We all see through the glass dimly. And we all have pieces of the puzzle. But the key to it all is to loving one another. Christians, Christians should never turn against each other. I'm going to say that again. Christians should not be turning against each other. I am not evil. And other children of God are not evil. We might not agree on everything. And we can make mistakes. But you know them by their fruit. Say that again. You know them by their fruit. And I don't mean apples and peaches and pears. You know them by their love. You know them by their patience. You know them by their long suffering, which is patience. Towards each other. Compassion, mercy, understanding, forgiveness. Not judgment. Judgment is not what we should be doing with each other. Oh, I had people write to me, oh, the Bible says we should judge this and judge that. It says, judge ye not, lest ye be judged. God is the judge. We are the discerners of evil. If we are walking in the spirit. Because if we're looking in the flesh, you're going to think everything's evil. You'll think each other's evil and not see each other's hearts. If you're looking at each other's faults, you are not going to love one another because you're just going to judge each other and say to yourself, why are they acting like that way? Why did they do that? Why is this one a homosexual? Why is this one an alcoholic? Why is this one doing all these perverse things? Instead of seeing the heart. I've got news for a lot of you. There are a lot of homosexuals that are getting into the kingdom of God. That love Jesus with all their heart, their soul, their mind, their strength. And it's a sin in their life that they're having a problem with. God will help them. Just like God will help the alcoholic. God will help the sexual perversion that many of you deal with. That you know is wrong. And what do you do? You do it anyway because the flesh gets the better of you. We lie when we're put in positions and we feel, oh no, I'm going to get in trouble. We lie. We've been lying since we've been children. When our parents caught us. You ever see the things with the children? The kid's got chocolate all over its face. And the mother says, did you eat a piece of chocolate? No, mommy, I didn't have any chocolate. It's all over the kid's face. But the kid is so young and ignorant in realizing that it's all over its face that it lies right to the parent. Are you sure you didn't eat any of that chocolate, Johnny? No, Mommy, I didn't eat any of the chocolate, Mommy. 
And then mommy says, Johnny, there's chocolate all over your face. How come there's chocolate all over your face if you didn't eat any of it? And then the kid gets that look like, oh, no, I just got caught. <laughs> we laugh, but that's what we do. We shouldn't be doing that as Christians. There's no reason to lie. If you're confident in yourself and in your person, you have, don't have to lie to anybody about anything. Because you're comfortable in yourself and in your relationship with the Father. I know I'm not a liar. My people call me a liar all the time when I tell these amazing stories. I've been accused of being a liar. Good, call me a liar all you want. They call Jesus a liar, so I'm in good company. They call him a wine bibber too. Matter of fact, they said he was of his father, the devil. Good company. I've been called that too. So hallelujah, I guess I'm doing something right. Love one another. That's where the power comes from, in the army. And make sure when we stand next to each other, we're not turning the gun on each other. That we're aiming the gun at the enemy, not our brothers and our sisters. Shame on us for aiming the gun and the rebukes at our brothers and our sisters who are just struggling to try to do things right too. Love one another. That's what he commands us to do. Love one another as I have loved you. So, I'm Lois Fogel Sharp. I'll be back when he sends me back again. And I did the interview with the Wild West Crypto guys. It should be out there one of these days. Be looking for it. They're good brothers in the Lord and I hope to visit them one day. You know, they've, they've opened up Texas for me and Gary to go down there and get a place and talk live to the people. So we're, 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 we've put that all in God's hands. Um, you know, when the timing will be for us to do that. But I really think the father wants us to meet each other live. You know, we all need to be together in one mind and one accord and have the power of the Holy spirit just fall down upon us all. And, and allow the Holy Spirit to do his thing. When you're, in, when you're in a place with all the gathering of a bunch of Christians and you praise the Lord and you allow the Spirit to take over, it's the most amazing atmosphere to be in. I've, I've been in that. You feel like you're going to fly up to heaven. And then you see miracles. You see people get delivered right in front of your very eyes. Word of knowledge comes out and people get healed. That's what we're looking to do, Gary and I. And those that are with us. So keep that in prayer for the Lord to show us clearly. You know, we believe we're going to Texas first. It's kind of in the middle of the country. And they're, they're a red state, so they're open. <laughs> so I'll be back when he sends me back again and have a blessed day.